Hello, here we are again, Crosstavon and Kippers. I just thought I'd make a quick little video about what I've been up to today instead of being at work. Um, while we were away travelling, I ordered a Thule Omni Step and uh, it's been sat in the box and had some decent weather today, so I decided, right, you know what, I'm going to fit this to the van. Now, the thing is that the fitting kit for it from Thule is roughly about 75 to 85 pounds. And when I got a look at the instruction book, I thought, well, actually, there doesn't seem to be a lot to this. Now, I, I did watch Emily and Louise's video, and I do appreciate that some of you guys will have fabricated something from steel angle iron, et cetera, et cetera. And um, good luck to you with that. That's great. Uh, I applaud you for doing that. However, me being me, I'm thinking, well, I've got loads of stuff lying about. Have I got something that I can use to fit this step securely to the van without spending a hell of a lot of money. Now, as it happens, um, with the bolts and stuff that came with the step, all I've had to add to that really is a couple of bits of stainless steel tube, a couple of stainless steel bolts that are a bit longer, and a short section of Unistrut that I just happen to have lying around. So let's get into the video, have a quick look at it, and then, uh, as I say, it works for me, and if you wanna have a go at it yourself, well, give it a go. It won't cost you a lot. I reckon, give or take, fiver, because let's face it, it's an off cut of uni struts. I'm going to say that cost me now. The bolts were 40 pence each. A couple of nuts, well, the nuts were already supplied and a couple of bits of uh, stainless steel tube that I had lying around. So let's go into the shed and uh, take so it So the away. actual step came with all the bolts and washers and nuts, etc., that you would need to mount it. However, it doesn't come with the vehicle specific kit. Now, from what I can see from this diagram, it just seems to consist of a bit of uni strut and a bit of angle iron. So what I'm gonna do is just show you what I've used. Again, stuff just essentially lying around in the garden and we'll see uh, if I can make this fit. I haven't tried it yet, so um, we're gonna have a go, and then if it's successful, then you'll be watching this, and if it isn't, well, I'll make a different video. So in an attempt to get this uh, step level, I've realized that if I bolt this uni strut to the correct place on the underside of the van, or the recommended place, then the difference in height between the chassis member and the sill of the van is approximately that plus the depth of the uni strut. So this is a bit of marine grade uh, tube that I had again lying around in the garden and I've just cut it down to the right size. I've knocked a couple of flat edges on it just so that when I do put it on It'll sit nicely against the beveled edge of the uni strut. And then the M8 bolts that came with the step sadly aren't long enough to accommodate the additional space. So what I've actually also got is some uh, M8 stainless steel coach bolts, which I've simply trimmed down and uh, bolted through the M10 uni strut uh, bolt retainers for want of a better word so of course if you're doing all this from scratch to save you the hassle of doing this just get some uni strut fittings which are m8 rather than m10 but as i say i've already got these so these are the ones i'm going to use so that's pretty much my setup as i say that's the height of the uni strut bolted to the underside of the van plus this spacer and then the step itself now again on the step, you'll see that the M8 bolt will go through the top of the bracket and then exit at the bottom where the, the nuts and washers will be fitted. Now there is obviously a tendency to perhaps over tighten that. So again, I've got some M10 aluminium tube, which I've cut down to be exactly the right distance in there. So they'll give some more support to the bolt when I get it tightened up. And so we're out of the van and there is the short piece of uni strut cut and bolted to the chassis into a couple of riv nuts, which are M10 riv nuts. Uh, and uh, if you think you need a huge tool to fit that, no, you don't. There's a link in the description at the bottom for an Australian guy 
who's got a super cheap method of fitting big riv nuts without buying an expensive tool. And here we are down at the front, a couple of heavily galvanized bits of angle iron trimmed down to fit the sill and then bolted through from the outside with stainless steel nuts and bolts. And uh, there's the supplied M8 bolt that came with the step poking down, ready to be mounted to the step itself. So let's have a go. So there we have it, it's in. Um, I seem to have measured the spacer okay. Trial and error will be when I come to open it out. And if I need to increase that spacer, well then fair enough, that's not a big hardship. And uh, I've got the cable all nicely clipped onto there. So basically the step is nicely horizontal on my van. So I've got the standard uni strut of 45 millimeters plus what is a 20 millimeter spacer. And that's given an overall um, drop from the inner chassis of 65 millimeters. And then this is bolted tight up against the sill. So uh, nothing there. And on the Citroen Relay, Ducato, Boxer, etc, etc, we've got a very convenient grommet there in the sill. So I'm hoping that I should be able to route the cable up through there, up to where the fuel filler is, and then mount it on the door post on the left side of the door as you're coming into the van. Right, so now I've got the step actually mounted to the van. I now have my beautiful assistant has come out to demonstrate the use of the step. So what I'm going to do is just um, rig it up on a battery before I go ahead and waste all my time installing the switch. So here we go. Orange on the negative, purple on the positive, and out it comes. And at least I would like to just step on there, please. Just to make sure that my brackets are okay. There we go. And back out, please. Excellent. So now for testing purposes, I just reverse the polarity of the orange and purple wire. And let's see, go back in. Great. So I'd advise you to do this as soon as you've mounted it, because then that way you'll see if you've over tightened it anywhere. And then, you know, then you can avoid any possibility of it jamming or sticking either on the way out or on the way back. So I'm going to have this down as a success and I will just go ahead and wire up the switch. Actually in practice, once I got under here to try and route these cables, I suddenly remembered there was this huge grommet, which is just down behind where the diesel filler pipe is. And I'll just quickly come around to the inside of the van. So if you take the base off the, uh, the pillar, and there's the diesel filler pipe and then here's the step pipe just come up nicely through that grommet and then now i'll be able to very easily root it up just inside of here to get it to the desired position so all in all this uh, installation has turned out to be much much easier than i thought it was going to be so this is where i'm thinking of putting it because i've got this nice flat area here and yes, okay, it's a little bit low, but it's actually at the perfect height if you are outside wanting to open the step. And it's not too inconvenient if you're inside wanting to operate it. So I think that's exactly where it's going to go, because that's going to be by far the easiest place to put it. So that's it in, physically in anyway. Sadly, it's not wired up yet. Um, it's getting dark and I'm running out of time. Uh, anyway, you don't really need to see it going in and out again. Um, so all I would say about putting it in this position on your relay, Ducato, Boxer, whatever it is, is that behind this plastic post trim, there is of course solid metal. So you will need to drill the metal out to accommodate the depth of the switch. And also if you're drilling straight through from the outside, remember to use the drill bit on your hole saw arbor and reduce it to minimum because if you have it too long, it's going to damage your seatbelt mechanism if you uh, drill too far in. So, as I say, make sure the arbor is as short as possible and then you shouldn't have any problems. Thankfully, I'm not giving you this advice from experience. Uh, I kind of realized what could happen and took, took steps before I even did it. So there we go. Pat on the back for me.
So there you go. I hope that's been useful. Um, if nothing else, it just demonstrates that you don't have to spend 75 quid. You don't have to be welding or fabricating anything. Although, admittedly, it's just been put on today and the proof of the pudding is going to be on will it stay where it is after multiple hours of use. Uh, I kind of think it will. And uh, the whole cost of this was, like I said, just a couple of bolts, a bit of leftover um, stainless steel tube and uh, a bit of uni strut and a couple of fittings. So all in all, a very cheap solution to an otherwise potentially expensive fitting kit. OK, thanks very much. And if it has been of any use to you, then please just like the video and uh, we'll see what I can come up with next. All right. Thanks now. Ta-da.